killing is a game fake rankers really we got otaku spirits solo leveling episode six review i don't know why he keeps calling this a reaction but let's see what he got to say i'm starting to get an idea why there's so many shady things happening in dungeons okay. like there's so much emphasis on the idea that people like are cutthroat dungeons and that there's all these cases of people disappearing all these shady stories we're so lucky to be in a guild because we don't have to deal with like all these bad stories of people killing each other the false rankers all this kind of stuff about how people are killed the false rankers is very interesting though huh it's like a new precedence that Hunters, sometimes they might not be as weak as you think, right? It might be an E rank hunter, but what if that E rank hunter like hit his strength during the test? So he's actually like an A rank hunter in disguise? Killing each other in dungeons. Why is it happening? I don't know. Maybe because they suck at investigating things. Yeah, is there no like referee or like any sort of like regulator, some kind of admin that has like oversight and what goes on in dungeon? Because it seems like once the dungeon closes, it's it's done. So like all the shit that we did, you know, in terms of to Hwang Dong Suk's party, is it nobody can ever find out? The dungeon's just closed. That's it. Like that was that was one of my jokes that I made with like what was the second episode? No, third episode, I think it was, where it had it kind of open up with Jin Woo and this these guys show up to investigate the fact that yes, mm. in this double dungeon somehow he made it out and they asked him no questions. This guy literally survived this dungeon. And no questions asked. They just said, touch this crystal ball. And it happens the same here where you have Jin Wu and Jin Ho come out of the dungeon. And literally all the lady says is, oh, so you must have beat it solo. And he ran and hide. That's not how you investigate. Well, I think Jin Ho is pay to win armor might have enticed them. But there is a little bit of a logical gap in how people seem to just... Not question these little details, you right? You ask them what happened. You don't go, well, it's obviously you did it. And you I mean, look at his armor. Hide. Look at his okay, armor. got it. You're not going to ask any questions? It, it's <laughs> yeah, maybe this girl character is fucking mega dumb, but it's not that big a deal. So dumb. It's so dumb. And again, it's probably why people are disappearing in dungeons because they're not investigating anything. That's another thing, though. If people are actually straight up investigating, like, disappearing from dungeons, should there not be some kind of, like, I don't know, the police or some other squad you get in, like, start to get, like, involved? Like, hold the fuck up. You're telling me Huang Dong party, this guy keeps getting, like, these people signing up for quotas to be just, like, they're just disappearing every time? There's nothing suspicious going on at all? Anyways, I don't know. They could have another investigation. I'm sure there will be. It kind of insinuated at the very end of the episode that this guy's brother... I think that was the guy's yes, brother. The little bro. Maybe he's going to get involved now because his, yes. his brother's dead and he's going to want to figure out what happened. The thing is, I don't know how it's going to happen because I thought there was like a, they're on like bad terms in terms of like the big bro's like monologue about how he seems to have some kind of like uh, complex against the younger bro who seems to be a lot more established. I mean, look at the fucking back muscles right now. Look at this rippling muscles. But if they're on bad terms, what motivation would the younger bro have to get like revenge on the big bro if he doesn't want to get revenge maybe he's just kind of interested in who is strong enough to take out someone like his big bro i don't know happened who knows but anyways decent episode i did really like decent episode man otaku spirit standards are pretty fucking high everyone else was like oh my god this is the peak peak oh my god you know every fucking soul leveling video title thumbnail is just going but, you know, I think we do that on every video for the sake of the YouTube algorithm. This segment towards the later part with the kicking in of the music. Always love when you get some vocals inside of a show, especially when something technically very impactful is happening. I will say that I'm I'm a little bit question mark on Jinwo's kind of transformation into being technically a killer now. I don't know mm. that I quite felt it. There was a, a little sense in there that why I think they handle it decently well, but I think that transformation is... It's always a it's always a shady area. Like, how do you handle somebody taking a life for the first time? How I think that um, like you know, talk with spirit brings up a good point. Some characters they will just nonchalantly gloss over the fact that they just kill someone for the first time in an isekai because those shows probably are more focused on comedy and doesn't really take itself too seriously. Some other shows might take itself very seriously and have the main character go through a fucking all nine stages of fucking grief and just go through and be like, oh my god, I actually killed someone. What am I going to do with my life? To the point where they start to accept themselves. I felt like Sun Jing Wu's... Well, first things first. He was forced to kill them, right? The panel, the system showed up and said, you got to kill him right now. This is a quest, right? So not only was there that incentive, the second thing was, I think, that combined with the flashbacks that he had, 
Because this isn't the first time that he's gotten betrayed and he reminds himself again that, oh yeah, this is survival of the fittest. Remember last time, right? So these two things combined, I and the fact that he's been changing throughout the last couple episodes, not in terms of just physical, you know, physical appearance, but the mental psyches, I think that the way that they handled it was pretty good. How do you handle somebody essentially killing? What is their mindset like? All that kind of stuff is always a massive question mark. I yeah. think it's justified. I have no questions there. <laughs> I have no questions there. It's literally like justified. But it is always, always that question mark of how they handle that and how it goes forward. And I, it sort of got me questioning that they could possibly go in the direction of what's the chances that Jin Will Song will go on the route of essentially it becoming a game to him. I guess that's the best way to put it. If this But it is a game and we are a player and there was even a quest saying kill like zero out of six. You got to kill all six of them to become a, like a, to pass this quest. Like this is straight up a game, right? This all becomes a game to him. If this, this is a quest, I have to complete the objective. Yeah. Complete the objective. So I guess it'll come down to what happens next. And I like how they're already kind of emphasizing heavily what I sort of predicted it was going the route of is, yes, this is a system or the statues or whatever it was that is trying to build him up. There seems to be an actual incentive, yes, for the, the system. Whoever is, like, moderating this game, whoever the developer may be, whoever is an oversight of Sung Jin Mu right now, like, clearly, it's in their best interest that we keep getting stronger. Because, like, there's been a couple of times, too, mentioned about how in the previous episodes, like, even the dungeons, they felt like they were pretty accurately scaled. Like, they didn't just fuck him. They just kind of easily, you know... They eased him in into the whole thing to get him leveling up, to get all these different stats, to make him stronger, and now he's become a killer. Or what, though? It's like, these are like super endgame, you know, story points that we're obviously not going to get the answers to yet. And sure enough, in this situation, it sort of proves that in the idea of, you're going to die, here's a quest, take care of it. Like, it's, it's almost like it's nudging him. Take care yes, of this situation. Yes. You cannot die here. And he's Why? even accepting it. It doesn't want me to die. It wants me to get stronger. The system is using me. If I'm going to get used, I might as well use a system. Like, if, 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 this is, if this is how it's going to be, I'll use it for my own advantage as well. Surely there's no consequences that comes with this kind of power, right? Doesn't this seem a little bit too good? You know, like, there has to be some kind of catch-22 at the end, right? Which I guess is probably going to be the bigger picture. I'm going I'm to assume that's where the story eventually goes is whenever that being that gave him this power, again, that was question mark of why is something in a dungeon making him stronger so that he can destroy the dungeons. Mm. Again, my assumption is going to be is that it's probably like a battle of gods. Like this, this. Yes. Battle of gods. Yes. I think he's making a good point here. If you've seen like Dragon Ball, like basically it's basically saying there's like a god that's representative of a universe. And they have all these different universes. They come together and you do like a battle of gods where each universe is in like a battling another universe. And the gods are kind of like, you know, they're, they're, they're basically representative. So like, a like, so for example, the world or in that context, right, would be Sung Jing Mu. And then the god would be the developer, the admin, someone, some kind of moderator that has oversight on Sung Jin Mu. And there's multiple different gods or different people, I don't know what these entities are, kind of like competing against each other by having their own players fight amongst themselves. I don't fucking know. This whole system, this other world where the dungeons are at, there's gods and they maybe don't like each other. And so they're, they're trying to build up one of I these think that players makes sense. Yes. to essentially kill their somebody that they don't like or another thing could be as simple as i don't know if there's a there's a bunch of multiple players even though there's only one single game and the the god in this context the incentive is for their players to get stronger faster so that they themselves can beat the game you know what i mean so obviously there's gonna be a lot of more detail specific to solo leveling that's gonna change how we're structuring you know this battle of gods concept but you can kind of get the idea the abstract framework of how a player and a god kind of behaves in this context, right? And so, yes, it's using it. It's using him and getting him stronger so that eventually he can go and kill whoever else. And in his mindset, it is, okay, if you're going to do that, I'll use it to benefit myself. It makes perfect sense. So, anyways, yes, the episode itself, them in there, he takes down the spider. Pretty awesome animation. Just jumping yeah. all over the place, flipping and dipping, slicing and dying. This spider fight ended so fucking quick, though. Nice. Holy. Uh, there was kind of one oddity here in the anime. They never... They never said bleed effect in the anime. The, the manhwa does technically... I thought there was only a paralysis effect. And uh, wasn't there a paralysis and kind of some damage over time? Was that the bleed? He kind of emphasized that he's causing a bleed effect. 
and that technically comes into play later on when he's fighting the other guys. Drain? Like, it was, when I was watching the anime, it suddenly, out of nowhere, the guys start, like, gudging blood out of their eyeballs and falling over, and I'm like, is that what Paralyze does to humans? <laughs> like, it didn't make any sense. Like, I thought it was some kind of, like, poison that damage over time effect. Life still? I guess it could have been the life still. Life still and a Paralyze. But in actuality, I don't know. I, I'm guessing it's an effect of his attacks. Uh, he's causing a bleed effect. Not that the dagger itself has a bleed effect. But yeah, they, that's what he's doing. Is he's causing a drain, bleed effect. And he causes drain. a bleed effect upon Paralysis yes, plus I, drain. I'm glad that this is something that actually came back up again. It was that aspect of like, okay, he has this reward that is full recovery. I Damn, bro. We don't have to fucking use it. We can just straight up save. We can straight up save the, uh, what's it called? What the fuck just happened to my chat? Anyway, you can just straight up save the rewards and just like abuse it in the future. Isn't that insane? So I wonder how long this will like stack over. For example, yeah, we had the full recovery based on today's dailies. But like, what if we didn't use it? What if we stack the reward until tomorrow and beyond? So do we get multiple full recoveries? That'd be a little busted, huh? I, my question mark at the time was like, I wonder if this is going to be like you acquired the skill recovery. But no, it was like a one-time use reward. Yeah. Sure enough, what, what, my question mark in the last episode was like, I wonder if he never did the jog part. Because when we left off that quest, he hadn't done the jog yet. And then he went off into this whole, this whole job. And, my and that's another thing, right? Because like, we don't have to do all the dailies in one go. And I've been saying this since the moment they fucking talked about a teleportation of how to get in and out of dungeons. Like, if we're going to abuse the daily quest of rewards like this, what about the daily quest penalty? What if in this dungeon... The timer went off in terms of how long you had to finish the dailies in a day, right? And like you were still in a dungeon. Would we be torted out? Is it like a fucking free jail, get out of jail card? And then what? Do you get put back in? I don't really know, but I think that buys you like fucking four hours, right? I think that'd be a fucking insane mechanic. My, my joke that I made at the time is watch he goes this dungeon, everything happens, he comes out of the dungeon, and suddenly he's like, well, that was a great dungeon, and suddenly it pops up saying, you did not do your running, and then it, it penalizes him. Exactly! No, no, no! No, he straight just, up, no, no, if it penalizes him, what happens, though? Then he gets ported out, and Jinho has to fight the spider by himself? Had it sitting there. He, like, he procrastinated it, and sure enough, it became beneficial. It's kind of one of those things of, like, I wonder if there's a limit to when he could actually accept it. Like, it is one of those cases that if he doesn't accept the rewards, he'll get penalized, or... Yes, is it, does it stack, or does it, like, reset every day, right? That's what I want to know. Or if it just goes away. So, yes, I and another thing is the stats, right? I doubt the stat allocation would ever go away. That would be so cruel in a game system if you, because like you get bonus stats, but obviously you don't have to like um allocate your stats right then. But like if you keep just like stacking these stats, you know, dailies, boom, 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 and then all of a sudden you're in a battle and you're like, shit, I'm getting my ass beat. But then you realize, oh yeah, I got like 20 points saved up. Why don't I just put all these 20 points into a certain stat and make me stronger right now? I feel like, you know, that kind of thing could also happen. That doesn't make sense. Do your quest, go to a dungeon, you get a free heal. It's, it's super cool how at least something like that, the writer has kind of fully thought out. Like, this can be something that I can use later on. So, yeah, he used that in order to regenerate himself, take down the boss. During the time that he's fighting... Jinwo, yo, the stuff around him kind of bugged me. I, I, I get that they're trying to play out this rookie... He's a rookie. He's panicking. He doesn't yeah. know how to respond to things. Um, he's doing cool things, like, again, the whole thing with the contract with uh, Jin Wil Song, trying to help him out with that. But at the same time, like, just sitting there, like, you're literally in a situation where these guys betrayed you. They stuck you in this dungeon. You're essentially up against a boss that you know, you, in his mind, never going to be able to beat this thing. We're dead. Plain and simple. But then he's just sitting there going, oh, what is Sung doing? Oh, that reminds me of the fakers. And it's like, why is this guy thinking about all this dumb stuff when literally he's in a life or death situation? It's fine. Was his reactions not like normal, I guess? Like Jin Ho's behavior during that spider encounter, did it come off that weird? To be honest, I was too busy getting excited for Sung Jin Mu to pop off that I wasn't really paying attention to Jin Ho's behavior. It was a it was a reason to expedition dump that there's the existence of people that apparently fake their rank. So they have the ability to lower their power so that they can fake their rank, get into lower dungeons and kill people. Yeah. I don't know. The world takes all people. I don't know. It could be setting up for like a future arc. There's people that like intentionally hide your strengths to what? Fucking masquerade around in low length dungeons to just fuck them up? But they would get, like, shitty rewards. Maybe they're just shitty people that just wants to, I don't know, psychologically just 
just manipulate and scare other hunters by making them feel like they're just as weak as them. People, I, I that, that, the faker, the faker rankers that I guess like Smurfs. there's enough of them that they have a name for it. I mean, I can understand that like there was one person that was a psychopath and he realized that he could. It it does it doesn't make any sense logically. Okay, so in this world, you essentially have people they will awaken to their powers. Like like the only reason you would ever want to smurf is if you just want to fuck with people on a personal level. Because like because everything scales with your rank. Like you don't want to be smurfing around. You get low level rewards. Everything is just way shittier. But if this person, this fake hunter, his only goal did not care about money or the loot. Just wants to fuck around with low rank hunters and like just like manipulate them. That's the only way I can see this happening. They will go into this system. They will touch this crystal ball. It will tell them what their rank is. It'll tell them what their mana is, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then they, they get assigned their rank. So the assumption. You can hide your power. Like you can like calibrate whatever this power level is at the time of getting graded by the machine. So instead of showing all 100% of your power, Maybe show just 20% of your power is what I'm understanding. ...is that the moment that they waken, like Jin Wo Song, he was a construction worker and suddenly went, you know, that little shock thing, like Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, and then the realization that he got some powers was that he was carrying a fucking sack, something, and he awakened, that he could lift the sack a little bit easier. That was it. That's how tiny, an insignificant amount of a power bump it was. The shock thing happens, and he goes, oh, I, I, I think awakened. <laughs> I got 10 and points. I guess at Great. that point, some people can go, oh, I awakened to the ability to lower my mana, so I'm going to lower it before I go in there and touch the thing. That way I can kill people in dungeons. Hmm. I guess now we're going into the details of if someone just awakened and they're just about to get tested, how could this new person have such control over their power? Then you can make the logical fucking jump of, all right, let's say this person awakened, but they instead of going right into getting graded, they just learn how to fuck around with their powers and eventually learn how to manipulate it to the point where they can suppress it, so then they can abuse the system. I don't know where we're going with this. I guess, like... That logic is a little bit of a stretch for me. <laughs> that logic is a little... I mean, I guess they can go in there, um, touch the ball, and be given, like, a C rank or something like that. But then they get the knowledge that, oh, yeah, I, I can lower my rank. And then they go in there and get... Re Reassessment? That's another thing, I guess. Be evaluated. And it yeah, goes, oh, wow, maybe. some reason you lowered your rank. But that would be like a massive question mark because that would be it almost would be. like a reawakening. I don't know. I'm thinking too much of it. Like a, it's like a de-awakening. It just sounds dumb. Like when I when that whole thing came up, I'm like there's people like that, I guess. I mean, I could see one or two people in, you know, thousands of years. But making a name for it kind of insinuates that there's a lot of people that are nuts enough that they're going to lower their rank, go into lower rank dungeons just to kill people. All right, moving on. <laughs> All right, <laughs> moving, moving on. on. I... I just wish this was, I guess my whole point here is I wish there was another explanation of why somebody would do that. Besides somebody just being a psychopath that wants to kill people and die. That's the only incentive. Because again, every every reward scales with your fucking ranks. There's no reason to be fucking around in lower ranked dungeons and being smurfing. Unless all you wanted to do was just murder other people and have fun. Dungeons. That just seems like a bit of a stretch it, for somebody man. to go other way to do. I mean, you can kill, again, the idea is that things happen in dungeons and nobody ever. Well, I mean, like, for example, I don't know. Because, like, if you smurf and you're categorized as a low rank, I was going to make the argument that maybe the person just wants to fuck around in low rank dungeons and kill people. But when times comes and they need some money to hustle, they could, uh, I don't know, go to a high rank dungeon and clear that as well because they're pretty strong. But it's like they would never get the clearance to get accepted into such high rank dungeons because they were already assigned to low rank. You know what I mean? Never knows. I don't so know. it's a really good way to be able to kill people. But still, whatever. But yeah, he kills the spider immediately. <laughs> General. Yo was like, Anaki, boss, what do you want me to do, boss? Boss, can you get some water, boss? Can I, can I take... He, bro, actually got him a cup of water. I mean, he was really quick with it. I think, um, basically, uh, I'm not sure if this is a trope, a common trope or some cultural thing, but basically that, that depiction of Jin Ho just going like, oh, Anaki, just giving him boss water and stuff like that. That's kind of like um how... You're basically just super sucking up, but it kind of plays into like this like um, uh, elder structure in Asian culture where you want to treat your big bro well. It's the big boss. You know, you got to make sure they get, the, they get their first drink, make sure they're not tired, get them a towel, stuff like that. But I thought it was like a pretty funny moment. Take a cool boss. 
<laughs> like he instantaneously becomes like a yakuza pun, just kind of like, what do you want to do, boss? Yeah, yeah, uh, yakuza trope. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that was funny. Uh, in the manhwa, they bust through the entrance where they caved it in, so it was kind of odd they changed it to where they came out of the upper, the upper tunnels. So that was how they came back in. Whereas. Yeah, anyways. And yes, they give... I, I think the upper tunnel one was just to make them look imposing, kind of intimidating, so that they're, like, looking down at us with their red eyes. Uh, Yo, the option to join them as an accomplice. I don't know. I, I don't think he was planning on that. I, I think he was just trying to figure it out because it kind of insinuates that, yes, he sees, okay, this spider dead. And then, yeah, all the guys are joking, like, man, this spider was probably weaker than we thought it was. If they can kill it, I think... I guess... Yeah, I mean, the smart thing for them to realize is like, holy shit, they actually killed a spider. That's crazy. Maybe we can't kill these kids. Maybe we should like to try to be safe here. But you no, know, classic anime villain trope is like, they're so dumb. They don't even realize what's going on. Instead, they kind of play along with them. They're like, oh, the spider must have been so weak. It's not to kill them. But it's like, little did they know. It must have just been super weak or something. But Dong Sok is like, no, Jin Ho has some really expensive armor. Like his his father is a boss. Yeah, so construction probably... CEO something about his armor his equipment that is making him super powerful let's loot the kid too so it's kind of one of those things where i think he was trying to suss it out like figure out what can he do okay kill kill jin huo like kill him really quickly and then we'll get an idea of what his armor actually is i don't it could have been that he was trying to get him under his wing and again i think it's more the fact that he was afraid of what kind of equipment that jin huo has because it shouldn't i think bro just wanted to you know loot you know the kid's armor but maybe even use him as a hostage for like fucking extorting money because the dad sounds like a constructed ceo i don't know how that would turn out right at that point you become just public enemy number one you're pretty much coming out as a terrorist and you're saying we demand you know this much like a billion one for the release of jin ho i don't think they would ever go like that but bro just saw the dollar signs in his eyes as soon as he saw the fucking armor it happened he literally just sold this boss. But yeah, of course, Jin Ho didn't do it. The, the manhwa sort of had where Jin Ho was walking over towards uh, Jin Wo. He's like, Jin Wo was thinking about how, hmm. I'm sorry. He keeps saying Jin Ho, Jin Wo, Jin Wo. I, it's, it's, why doesn't he just say Jin Wu? It's, it's Song Jin Wu. I, he, the way that he says these names is fucking, it's, it trips me out every time. I don't know who he's talking about. It, it, it makes sense. I, I, I understand that you're going to betray me. You're going to betray me because I'm weaker. It makes sense. Um, they didn't. That's how it should have gone. He was expecting it based on all the other shitty characters. But our boy Jin Ho is so good. He's such a well mannered kid. He already called us big boss. Obviously, he's not going to betray us. Bro literally gets in front of us and says, Get behind me, Anaki. I got For you. For reason, didn't have that in the anime. But yeah, Song did have some thoughts there that he was going to betray him. But it was like funny because I'm like, Yeah, I can see Look at this. why Jin Ho would do this. Like, he's going to be like, I'm not going to betray this guy. I think he realized the potential that Sung Jin Woo had and immediately aligned with him. I don't think, like, sure, you can say that this is just a well-mannered, nice kid, you know, protecting big bro like this. But, like, I think that bro understood that there is such potential with Jin Woo and that me teaming up with him is going to get me much further ahead in life than anything else. So you guys could say that he's being just like a nice kid. I think this is a cold, calculated move by Jin Ho to fucking prove his loyalty. Ain't no way in hell. I, you're not going to get me to kill him because he's a good dude. We've already established that Jin Ho is a good dude. But there was a side of me that's like, yeah, but can you take it? Like, there's a side of me that's like, yeah, but he's also not going to betray Jin Wo because he just watched him solo a boss. True. <laughs> like if I, okay, putting aside whether or not he's a good person, you have two parties. Put it. Who would you align with? The guy that just sold the fucking spider or these dudes that just fucking just went out to get some pickaxes because they were scared? I'm going to team up with Jin Woo, man. Aside everything that involved in this situation, you have two parties here. This one guy that just sold an extremely powerful boss. And then you have this group over here that literally left you to dead and ran off. I think he's going to kill them. I, I'd rather I'd rather be on this True. side of the fight. True. What I just seen him do, I'm going to be on this part. All my bet is yeah, on him. It, it was it was just because he's a cool dude. But yeah, this is where we get Jin Wo getting his first quest to kill people. I, I, I'm just saying that. I'm assuming that later on he's probably going to have to do this again. <laughs> to I wonder if you're going to keep getting quests. Um, I don't know which show I watched, but basically there was like a similar situation like this where you were basically given like a quest to do. Like, for example, kill six people, right? But like 
in, in the anime or the show that I watched, I can't really remember the details. There was this fucked up scenario where the six people were like randomly chosen. And there was a situation where it was like your friends, like it was your family. And it's like, you got to kill them. Like, wouldn't it be crazy if the system told him to like kill his fucking mom or sister for the sake of something? Like, what the fuck? I don't have any spoilers for you guys. I just read up to where the anime ends every episode. But yeah, he gets knocked back. And then Manwa, it, it specifically says, why is he still alive? Are you getting weaker? The, the mage literally goes, no, I used full power. There's no, he should not be alive. Oh, okay. This one attack here from this mage, it, maybe I underestimated him, but Sang Jun would look pretty fucking bad after this attack. But more context. So he used his full strongest attack. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. How did I miss? That was the only question mark that he had. Did I miss? But he does emphasize here. No, I'm not weaker. I literally. When I saw this panel, I was like, oh, God, are you fucking serious? We look so bad right now, dude. He used the highest power that I could possibly do. It kind of shows Jinwo's HP afterwards. He's like half HP, but that could partially be because he was fighting the spider. But it was a powerful hit. But yeah. no, Jinwo gets his quest. His quest to kill uh, six in the anime. <laughs> I don't know why they changed it from eight to six, but it's six in the well, anime. There was There's eight? six people there. It was kind of interesting to me for some reason. I, I, I do this that it said specifically six. So that means that it did not see Jin Ho as a threat, nor did the system want Jin Ho out. Because there, this could have created a massive conundrum if it said seven. Because that would- That's what I'm talking about, right? This is the situation I'm talking about. It's like being put into a situation, a fucked up one where it's like, what, really? I gotta kill my friend too, right? Could you imagine if it's seven and we had to kill Jin Ho too? Would he have done it? I don't know. What happens if you don't finish the quest? It said you get a penalty, an appropriate penalty. It's the same wording as failing a daily quest. Now, are we going to get sent to the fucking sand dungeon again and fight the centipede? I'm not sure what the appropriate penalty would be. Why, like, the system does not want Jin Ho to be alive to be a witness, so to speak. But essentially, yes, it's telling him, kill these six guys because they are people seeking to kill the player. They want to kill Jin Ho. Not they want to kill both of you. That they just want to kill you and that can't happen the system itself did it say ask the heart would stop are you sure when did you guys ever see that the only part that i said the heart will stop will say will you accept this quest if you don't accept this quest your heart will stop in 0 0.02 seconds that's accepting courage of the weak we're talking about this killing quest not a single moment did i ever see in that quest that it would say your heart would stop if you didn't complete this quest. I saw appropriate penalty would be applied in red font. Are you guys capping right now? What the fuck are you talking about? Is wanting to get stronger. He was having a breakdown during the moment where he was having all the flashbacks. Was there like a scene where the panel kind of showed up and said the heart would stop? It did. So during the whole mental breakdown of Sang Jun Mu, like thinking about the past and and lot and like justifying in his head why you know it's survival of the fittest and I need to do this, there was like a single panel. Are you sure? Are you sure that wasn't the fucking panel just referring back to the courage of the weak? I'm pretty sure what you guys are talking about are a rapid fire of different scenes going on that was a flashback to the courage of the weak panel and not necessarily. Uh, punishment for this current quest. I think you guys are fucking capping. But additionally, doesn't want him dead. <laughs> doesn't want him dying. So you need to kill these six and... Well, it's interesting because the, the actual text in the anime says defeat them. And I was curious if it was going to turn into a thing where all he had to do was just knock them out. But no, it, it, he, what he says, no, they want me to kill. But I will be curious if later on if it will pop up to, or somebody like the system itself talks to him later on or something like that. And he's like, you made me kill six people. No, we told you to defeat them. You chose to kill them. <laughs> I that would be like an interesting way of, oh, I never had to kill them before. That's, that's, that's some, that's kind of fucked up. It's like, damn, I was killing all these people the entire time. I didn't, I didn't realize, but I never told you to, you know what I mean? I wonder if it's going to be like one of those like little, like, you know, manipulation things like, no, I didn't actually say that. I said to defeat them, you chose to kill them. So you <laughs> lop their heads off. I, I think we're going off a little fan fiction territory right now because I don't think that's actually happening, right? If you made them bleed, you could have just knocked them out. I'd be curious about that. That would be like a, a super twisted thing to kind of throw right back in his face. And yes, technically be a lot more interesting in my opinion. But yeah, like I said, he bleeds 
paralyzes everything, all these guys, takes them all out, slicing them up. Uh, it was kind of interesting that one guy kind of puts his arm around him and he just kind of goes casually. And I was like, why? <laughs> just puts the arm around, just shing. <laughs> Would you let him do that? And um, I think wait, wait, what do you mean? Like Sung Jin would let him the armor run? I think that's like a cliche bullying scene. Like I, I don't know. I I've, I've seen so many scenes in like webtoons or different animes. Of, like it's like a, a delinquent and like the kid that gets bullied. The the one that they put the armor around. It's like, hey, come on, give me another drink. I think they were just kind of playing into that cliche. Yes, technically it was because they didn't know he had a weapon. Takes them all out. Goes to Dung Sook. Dung Sook says, ah, whatever. I I I have the ability to reinforce myself. He's not gonna be able to hit me with that. Whatever poison he's doing there. It's not Didn't gonna matter. Hurt me. He just slams his head. We just slammed his fucking head down. The fucking the animation was synchronized with the song too. Yeah. Cuts his head off. Um, it was it was kind of interesting to have that little brief moment of like trying to panic and trying to give him money. I'll yeah, right, throw that money scene. at the issue. Hopefully he'll stop. No, you're not gonna get away with it. You just said like everything that happens in Dungeon Vegas stays in Dungeon Vegas. Cut it off. And then, yes, the following scene where he goes out with uh, Jin Ho and the lady literally asks no questions, but instead makes her assumptions and writes down on the report and walks away because... I mean, the armor was really nice and shiny, but if we really wanted to nitpick at the show, that is a bit of a, a plot hole, I guess, right? Does it need to be addressed? I don't think so. I think it was just like a scene of, oh, how did you beat it? Ah, uh, we don't really have an answer. But look at this kid's armor. Don't worry about it. All right, we'll forget about him. We move on. Like, sure, would, would I want like a fucking FBI investigation into Sung Jin Mu based on his fucking... Like, if we had like a subplot of some kind of police force from, from the Guild Association that like hunts, that like tracks down you know, suspicious activities and, and, and like she's after Sung Jin Mu. Do we need that? I'm not really sure. For some reason, this... The Hunter Association sucks at investigating. Yeah, they do. I don't know. They, again, they might yeah, investigate they do. something later on. I mean, all the people. Song Dong Suk has gotten, you know, who knows how many times he's gotten away with this over and over again, getting people to sound to his party and killing them so they can loot more. Who knows how many years this has been, right? So whatever. I did like a little bit of the inner conflict that's kind of happening within Jung Ho Song during this entire thing because it is an aspect of, I think I got too caught up. In who the fuck is Jung Ho Song? I swear to God, look, look, I'm not, look, I'm not even trying to be mean, but this dude, I don't know who he's referring to. Sometimes he says Jin Ho, fucking Sung Jin Wo, Jung Ho Sung? Who the fuck is Jung Ho Sung? Jung Ho Sung during this entire thing. Jung Ho Sung? <laughs> Sung Jin Wu or fucking Jin Ho? Who is it? Because it is an aspect of... I think I got too caught up in the leveling and this whole process. I'm getting too caught up in the fucking namings right and now. Stronger and figuring out the system itself that I forgot the most important thing. What is the that? most important thing about dungeons themselves? This thing, the thing that I had pounded in my head for so many years, I forgot the fact of survival of the fittest. So many years. Oh, he's talking from this perspective of Sung Jimu. I'm like, oh my God, is this guy thinking about solo living for this many years? The fact of the weak get exploited. Remembering mm. all those moments, especially like the double dungeon, being left behind a dead, all that kind of stuff. Because I'm weak, they're going to leave me to die. Because I'm that's why I will be strong and I'll flip it against it. I think that whole, I mean, that's the world, right? It's not even just this dungeon. Like obviously, like people, like survival of the fittest is obviously applied to a lesser degree in modern life. Like you don't just die nowadays for just you know being like back in the day when you're just in caveman era you straight up if you're just weak you just die but obviously as society progresses you know you got modern technology medicine blah 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 all that kind of stuff but at the end of the day survival of the fittest still does apply in the real world and like i guess sung jimu's like a situation in the dungeon the way that he got betrayed the way that he kept remembering it was important to build up to this critical point where he uses it as a justification to actually kill which i think is fully deserved I'm weak. Jin Ho Yo is side. going to betray me and side with them. Yeah. Because I am weak, they are going to they're going to kill me so they can exploit me and take all the money in this dungeon. That is a major point of this whole thing is realizing that. But at the same time, coming to that realization in front of Dong Suk that I'm not weak. You're, you're weak. weak. Yeah. Because that's how this works. Because you're hunters, you guys are aware that you can get hunted too. Because you are weaker than me. That's right. There was like a really cool line. I think um, the first time I saw a line like this being used was in One Piece in the earlier arcs where a fucking bunch of bandits like attacked like Shanks' group. 
and like they put a gun. They like point a gun towards us. And then Shanks is like, you sure you want to do that? You put a gun on my face. You better be ready to kill. And then immediately one of his men just boom, Lucky Roo just shoots him in the side of the head. And it's like, huh, if you were ready to point a gun at me, then you should have been ready to die. Right? I think that point was really cool. It's like, well, shit, you were trying to kill me. It's like, why wouldn't you expect to kill, be killed yourselves? And you were going to kill me because I was weak. Obviously, I can kill you because cool. you're weak. It's coming that realization. And it is, again, a question mark as to how well this writer handles that. Because, again, that is a that's a big choice. <laughs> that is a... Sorry, my lighting went out there. Massive choice. And the route that it can go is the aspect of, yes, he could become traumatized by this. He could become, you know, he could, next scene he's puking on the ground or puking in the toilet because he's realizing all these memories of killing guys. All that sensation of slicing them. All that stuff can come to his head. Or it can go the route of, it's a game and I'm losing. I think that his mental uh, the rigidity, his mental armor, his, his mental strength, I think it'll be changing. I don't think he'll have like a moment of, oh my god, I kill, I'm going to start puking. Like, what have I done with my life? I think bro is just going to continue to just like evolve. And like the way that his physique is changing, and I believe his mentality will also change to the point where all these killings will just become just second nature to him. Losing probably reality. Or just simply, it is what it is. I'm going to yeah. use the system because I got to get stronger. Should I, I walk think, away? Yeah. Which they'll probably I, I think that's what they're going to do, right? You know, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Anyhow, that's my thoughts on episode six of Soul Leveling. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, make sure. I just don't know why he calls it a reaction. Maybe it's for search engine optimizations, but y'all know what to do. Please go give Mr. Otaku Spirit a like. Sub to his, sub to his uh, channel if you enjoyed it. I know that the video, this video might go up before my reaction goes out. Yeah, we're dealing with limited ads right now. It's unfortunate, but the episode itself was fantastic though, right? We're finally getting through this like bridge of like becoming, like changing from the Jin mood that we used to know versus this K-pop idol guy that we've seen the posters. It's cool to see the physical transformation, but also like the mental transformation of how he deals with like killing people. I'm sure it's going to be addressed a little bit in the next video, but yeah, that's it for me.